Great song, Tom. Great, great. Good to see all of you. Good to hear you sing. We're glad to have you. It was occurring to me just a little bit ago that, you know, a lot of things have changed, and how many sentences have you heard in the last year that started that way? But indeed, a lot of things have changed, and some of them are more difficult. And it was just occurring to me that the greeting that the preacher makes is more difficult. It's more complicated than what it used to be. It used to be that everybody was in the same room. And so you just said, hello, welcome, and move forward. Maybe you'd say, guest, we thank you especially for coming. We still say that, but we're not in the same room anymore. We, we have those who are adjacent to us in the west end of the fellowship area in the mask only section. And we've got people who watch on Facebook and people who watch on our own streamlining program and at our website, and we got people, maybe the YouTube as well. So hello to all of you. Thank you for being with us. Besides that, we've got the North Side and we got the South Side Church today. And uh, we had people beginning to ask the elders, what are you gonna do about the new uh, advisories that we have in regard to COVID? What changes are you going to make? And so you're experiencing a moderate change this morning in that if you prefer to sit every pew, they're open on the north side. You're the north side church. Although there's another one in town, I know. And if you prefer to sit where you're still separated by at least one pew from other people, you're the south side group. Welcome to you as well. And I guess I shouldn't forget the balcony. As you see, it, in the nursery, we, we've got all the people to whom we want to say hello. And the bottom line is we want everybody to feel you're included and you're important. And, and you who are at home, we'd love to see you feel able to come back and be with us. Hope your health is such that you can. It's just great to be able to be together like this. I'm not supposed to make a whole lot of announcements, and I try to shift as many of those as I can to other people so that I can just get right into preaching. But once in a while, I'm asked to do an announcement that I feel like that I just better make it. So, Betty said to tell all of you hello. <laughs> I felt I ought to do that. She is in Alabama, but her heart is with us, and she'll be back. So God bless her and those that she's with. She's enjoying seeing her daughters and her azaleas. She's bragging on her azaleas, and they are pretty, and she's enjoying. This morning, in our... Oh, I've got one more. i got to say, I'm still excited about last weekend. Moving forward, but I'm so excited about being with the young people in Kansas City and that LTC program that we had. And I want you to be back tonight because that's when they're going to put on display here everything that they did. The boys are going to lead us in worship, and they did a great job there. They'll do a great job here. We're going to hear about the honors. We're going to have a, a video slideshow of things they did there. We're going to have sandwiches. You don't want to miss this, folks. Besides, you want to buy in on supporting these young people in every way. Be back here at 6 o'clock. I just got to urge you to do that because I think it's so important to the life of the church right now and in the future that we do everything we can to encourage these young people. Now, as to the lesson, a lot of times we begin with a, a text and we read a passage of scripture and then we may talk about that or get around to things that are covered in it. If you're looking for a text for the lesson this morning, you can go ahead and open your Bible to the book of Ephesians and the book of Colossians, but we're going to go to the text last this time. I hope that doesn't cause anybody to stumble and fall because we, you're so out of step with what's common, but that's just the way that this came together seemingly in my mind. We want to look at those passages as the wrap instead of the beginning. And I think I'm safe to say 
Though I'm not visited in everybody's household, I think I'm safe to say that I'm going to talk a bit this morning about something that is found in every one of our households, whether it's a house or an apartment or wherever it may be, whether it's elaborate or common, I think there's probably going to be one in your household. When I say one, I mean at least one. And I'm talking about something that's smaller than a refrigerator. In fact, that's small enough. I've got one in my pocket right now. That's how small it is, but it's very, very common. 90% or more of the people have at least one. 85% of people, I'm told, have the use of one at least once a week. Excuse me, once per day. Oh, it's real common, isn't it? It's something that is so common that seldom would a day pass that you didn't use it. People fight over it. There are accounts, I'm told, I've not read one precisely, but I'm told that people have killed for this object to be in their control. Some people will, they're just driven to have it. They're just driven for it to be under their control. It represents that control, that power, and it's like a pecking order that's established in the family. In the book of Ephesians, I'm not going to turn there and read some now, but particularly in chapter 5, there's a lot of discussion that God gives through the Apostle Paul as regards to how the family ought to get along with each other. And the basic overriding thought there is submission. Everybody submit to everybody else. Husbands to their wives, wives to their husbands, children to their parents, and all of you submit to each other. But when this object gets involved, sometimes that gets all violated because whoever has got it seems to be in control. I'm told that some people, can you imagine this, that they will hide it so other people can't find it. They might even take it to work with them. And on rare occasions, in order to ensure that they're still going to have control, they take it with them to the bathroom, lock the door. It's important. It shapes lives. One guy mentioned it in his will. Have you figured it out yet? Here it comes. Here it comes. Hope I didn't lose it. It's remote to the TV. <laughs> you may be saying, you who are sitting closer can see better than I can. You may be saying, nah, that's not a real one. That's not big enough. It's supposed to be long. And it's supposed to have upside, downside, and all that. Yeah, but I didn't have permission to bring ours out of the house. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, she's in Alabama, and I'm not about to take the remote out of the apartment. You know that. And I'm not saying who's in control of it. I'm just saying I'm not doing away with it. This thing has an interesting history. In 1950, Zenith came up with the first one of those, but it had a cable on it. You, you remember those microphones that preachers used to walk around with, and sometimes the space they'd go was wider than, and, and, and it was long, and they'd throw it this way and throw it that way, and they walk over here and throw it that way and throw it that way, and he kept on doing that and doing that. One little boy said to his mom, Mom, if he gets loose, will he hurt us? Well, the first ones of these TV remotes had a cable like that. Stretch it all the way across the room to where you are, and then you could do it. And, and then the, the, that was called, of all things, the lazy bone. <laughs> I, I kind of like that. I bet the dogs did too. But uh, 
Then the Flashmatic was the first one that was wireless. 1955, the wireless came out. But on sunshiny days, it wasn't very effective. The Zenith Space Command was presented in 1956 first, and it caused the price of a television to go up by 30%. But if you had one, you had one. And your neighbors probably didn't, and you showed your affluence. Back in those days, probably if I was watching TV in 1969 and I had my second one by then, the first one someone gave us was one that they'd been letting their five-year-old boy practice on, and it was a tube type, and he'd lost most of the tubes, went to 7-Eleven, found matching tubes, and got that 12-inch thing to work. Not very well. That's the TV. No remote. The next one, I'm not sure how we inherited, but it was then, it was a console. But you know how I got that channels changed on that? By about 1916, 19, it wasn't 1600, uh, <laughs> 1969, I could say, Nick, would you go over there and change the channel to channel four from channel eight? And he would do it. I had a trained son. That was pretty neat, but of course he grew up and left home and I needed a remote. People have developed the funniest names for those things. I wish we had time to hear what the one you've left at home today, if you don't have it in your purse, uh, is named. People, I'm told, call it the Dulby, the Podger, the Blipper, the Melly, the Dridge, the Clicker, the changer, the flipper, the zapper, the moat, the buttons, the doofa, the dooflicky, and the owner, owner offer. I don't know what you call yours. Mine's a remote. It became evident that the remote has the power to influence the whole family and the culture of a people because it was access to the choosing of where the focus was going to be on the family. The, I hope you know the modern entertainment world, whether it is at the movie theater or if it's what you may remotely dial up on TV, does not have the same moral standards as you want in your household and in your family. It will dial up and invite into your living room people saying things that if they were there bodily, you would ask them to leave. Will expose your children and yourself to scenes and things and concepts that will be appalling. And if you were asked if you believe in, support, endorse those kinds of things, you would say absolutely not. It presents unrealistic solutions to problems. Whereas it's difficult for us to be able to decide how do we handle this problem? How do we handle that problem? How do we resolve what the trouble that's going on in our family? How do we orient to the things that are happening in our nation, the television that we dial up would cause us to believe if we just accept the inference that it seems to imply would be that in a half hour you can resolve anything. On the hour program, sometimes it gets really, really confused. And I'll look at my watch and say, this is a mess. I don't know how they're going to resolve this in 15 more minutes but they always do. We get the idea that everything is solvable by just a little more time and that it's going to work out after all. But along the way, along the way we may fail to understand that these things aren't real, that this is not the way life is. Our children may come to think that it's a play world 
And as they observe those play worlds, they see things that uh, imply strongly a lack of dignity, a lack of sensitivity for other people's feelings, a lack of appreciation for human life. Our children watch people die over and over again in video games that have remotes as well and TV and then they see them on another show and children connect the dots and say well he didn't stay dead it was only for a problem solving issue and now there he is again and the cheapening of human life I saw somewhere an unbelievable statistic that indicated that by the time most children who commonly do get entertained and educated more than we believe by watching TV have seen something like 2,500 murders before they go to preschool if they watch TV with their parents. Do we think that that doesn't have a lasting impression? That the choices that are being made in our household that are belonging to God supposedly are realistic. Relationships are destroyed. Conversation almost doesn't exist because we live in that play world, but in the real world. In the real world, there is still a sense that we hold a remote. We do hold some control. We do have the ability to make choices, to, if you were putting it into this light, change the channels. Joshua said to the people of his time, choose you this day whom you will serve. We still have a choice. Choose who you will serve, whether the gods that our fathers served back across the river or if you will serve the Lord God Almighty. But he said, as for me and my household, our decision is made. We will serve the Lord. And God said through the proverb writer that blessed is that nation whose God is the Lord. When we think, well, things are just going all crazy in our society, when we discover that our people around us don't believe the things that we believe, that they don't cherish, that they're not willing to support and to endorse, the things that we believe are sacred and eternal. When we realize that, we need to do more than change the channel that we are watching. We need to change the focus of our lives. That's where our remote brain, our mind, our soul kicks in. And we have control of that. We, every one, have control of that. We can change to where it ought to be. In our homes, our parents can select to direct the whole value system, the priorities to which people are being exposed in that home. These are the things, parents, these are the things that are going to contribute, if not determine, Things like who your children choose to marry. They're going to determine whether your children continue to attend the church, whether emphasis is, whether they continue to believe that they should be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ in his church, or if they become liberal and expand their thinking to say, as long as it's called Christianity, I still can endorse it and I can embrace it. It's going to determine 
whether they understand the bottom line of what exists in the relationship with God, whether they are faithful to their mates, whether their marriages last, and whether your grandchildren will be brought up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord in a Christian home. Change channels. Change to God's way. We have the remote. We have the power. We have the ability to switch. But we have to make the decision. It's not automatic. It's not necessarily always easy. But after all, who controls the remote, as it were, in your household? Is it mother? Is it dad? Is it the combination of the two? Is it the children? And are the parents submissive to the children as though the children were in control of the household? And watching TV, they might gain the impression that they're supposed to be. We have to be very careful. We have our own remote, and God urges us to use it. Go with me now to the book of Colossians. One of these passages that I want us to see before we stop today. In verse 8, Colossians chapter 2. My translation here reads, see to it. There is a great message in just those three words. See to it. That's like saying, make this happen. Make sure this happens. See to it. See to it what, God? See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. According to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. See to it that you focus on the right thing. See to it that you're getting your information through the Spirit of God, in the Word of God. See to it that your children are brought up in the admonition and the truth of God's Holy Word. In the book of Ephesians in chapter 3, beginning in verse 14, he said, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom God's family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Let his spirit speak to you. That you be empowered by his spirit, not by the things of this world, not by the philosophies that exist today, but by his spirit, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all of the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's where you need to focus. That's what needs to become not only preliminary, but the basic solution to the problems that exist, not going to come to us through the remote but through the word of God, he gave us chapter 6, verse 10 and following. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Stand against the, the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities against the cosmic powers over the present darkness and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. It is not a simple earthly idea. 
It's a battle for minds, and it's a battle for souls. At your house, in your life, who has the remote? Who's in control? I hope that it's the Lord Jesus Christ who is steering the direction that your family goes. If you're here today and subject to the invitation of Jesus in any way, we invite you to come to accept him as your Lord and Savior, to be buried with him in baptism as a penitent believer or as a child of God returning, confessing sin and asking forgiveness, asking the prayers of the brethren. We're here to help you. Come right now while we stand and sing.